Yes, Sergeant. Step by. Where's your picture? Don't have a picture yet, Sergeant. Okay, gents, listen up. Everybody will have a picture tomorrow. Is that understood? Yes, Sergeant! I don't care what the picture is. Everybody will have a picture. If you need, I'll bring a picture of my mom in, and you can all have a copy. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're talking about basic training in the Canadian Armed Forces. A couple of disclaimers before I go forward. The footage we're going to be looking at today is from a series known as Basic Up. It is a fantastic show, although a little dated compared to today's uh, standards of basic training. It still has the basic principles and overall basis of uh, recruit training when it comes to the Canadian Armed Forces. And I would strongly encourage you all to watch it if you are... Uh, about to apply or even currently in recruit training with the Canadian Army or the Canadian Armed Forces in general. It's got a lot of good points, it's really well structured, uh, and it's real, it's raw. And that's why I want to talk today uh, about this kind of subject, because so many of you of my fans and followers uh, on this channel have asked me lots of questions about basic training. One of the big things that comes up is room inspections or inspections in general of you and your uniform and your kit and equipment. And it's something I want to speak to because now that I am trained as a leader within the Canadian Armed Forces and I was in the British Army, I've done my own you know, inspections of soldiers in the British Army, now I'm being brought into the Canadian world of doing the same thing. And I want to give you guys some tips, some hints, uh, and really the way to do things and the way not to do things. And specifically in today's example, the way of not to handle room inspections. Army training and any kind of military training is extremely pressurizing okay it puts you on a lot of pressure strain natural challenges that you should be put and exposed to and some people react very differently and i'd like to give you this video to give you a little bit of an awareness to say this is not how to react and there is a time where you have to realize that you're going through a new lifestyle a new way of thinking and unfortunately that may be a really bitter pill to swallow for some people it's a big adjustment going into a military world coming from the civilian world and it takes time but you have to adjust uh, to succeed and if you don't and you go against the grain so to speak it's going to make your life very very difficult and when it comes to room inspections that is one of the ways you have to learn Learn by mistakes. You are never going to pass an inspection first time or potentially if at all. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing that you're not being uh, able to get everything right every time because you're learning, you're adjusting, you're seeing the intricate details of things that you should be checking and should be uh, cleaning or ironing or whatever else it may be in the certain standards that are giving you. And you'll hear that word a lot, standards. There's a standard. And in the military, we should all be the same. That's how the military culture and mindset works. And inspections obviously integrate that and install that discipline of your, your kit. And not just your kit, but you yourself and other people's kit as well. And you'll notice that sometimes when you go through in your inspections, you may get really good scores, but the person next to you is doing terribly. And that, unfortunately, is still somewhat of a failure upon yourself because you're not looking after others or you as a team. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you an example of an inspection that really does not go very well at all. And unfortunately, in this scenario, it just creates a sort of rabbit hole of stress and, and, and problems for this recruit. And I think it's something that we need to look at. So let's take a look and then we'll go from there. Okay, we are Monday morning, week six inspection. Uh, first inspection of the week. This week, Friday, it's the test for the inspection. So now we're looking into details, small details. So the platoon commander is going to check on Friday morning, or the division commander. And uh, overall, it's not too bad, but we're looking in, into details, like the combat pants on, underneath the shirt. It's never right, so we have to check that because they, they think we won't go there, but we will. So, as you heard from the Master Corporal here, clearly there is uh, a test coming up and standards are being tightened and tightened more and more as the weeks progress. That how normally things happen is, you know, the first few weeks you get everything wrong, it's a total mess, and progressively you get better and better as your inspections. Normally this is how inspections go. 
the room will have the troops all set up for their inspection at a certain time and a core senior or platoon senior or section senior as you can see in this particular image has a book which can note discrepancies or other kind of activities that are going on during the inspection and that person will follow through with the inspection with the master corporal or whatever senior is with you taking notes and identifying issues that are going on with the recruits the master corporal will walk into the room, the room will come to attention, brace up, and prepare for their inspection throughout the day. And at this point, you basically have to take everything that's coming to you. You have no ad adjustment period time, you can't uh, you know, get involved in the inspection anymore, you're done. That's it. You just accept what you have, and hopefully you have at the highest standard you can. And I want to start something off very clear when going into this video. As I said before, Things have changed, okay? Things and the way in which things have been done since this video has been made have changed a little bit. But the premise and the basis of what's going on is pretty much the same, okay? Equipment may be different, uh, the way in which things are said may be a little different, but for the most part, things are the same, okay? And I want you to really think about what's going on through these recruits' minds. And they're probably thinking terrified, nervous, scared, and it's natural to be, okay? This is your career. It's something that you've, you've done a lot of hard work to get to. Do not take things personally, okay? You have to try everything in your power to be proud in what you do and make sure that you do everything to the highest standards and ability, but you cannot wear your heart on your sleeve in this job and take everything that is going to be given to you to heart because it's going to give you a really hard time. You learn from your mistakes and you move on. That's it. It's as simple as that. If you start beating yourself up over things and getting into what we call going into the black, it can cause real problems to yourself. Really think about what's going on in these inspections and understand that they're not doing it to make your life harder. They're doing it to make you a professional soldier. And it's a good thing, right? And a lot of people say, you know, I hate inspections and I get it. It's not enjoyable being put through the ringer if, you know, an hour at a time being, you know, basically either told off or disciplined because some small minor little thing. But to you, that's a small minor little thing. But in the field, say in the field army, if you miss some small little things, people can die. So it's pretty serious stuff. And that's why it's taken so seriously. We go. So they're not too bad so far. We're just looking for details. Man on the floor. Number one, stand fast. Reminder, stand at ease. Private Brisson, 339, Avian Tech, 514, awaiting inspection, Mass Corporal. About turn. About turn. So as you saw there, the Master Corporal inspected the recruit first, both front and back for uniform and equipment to make sure everything is spick and span. Luckily, she got away with it. Uh, no real issues there, which is good. Normally, um, when you get inspected in this kind of forum, you're always going to have something picked up on your person and something picked on, up on your kit. But it looks like she passed that phase, so that's good. So he's now moving into her uh, bed space area to inspect the equipment and kit and uniform that she has. As you can see also, the section, course, platoon, whatever it may be, senior is also there with the book. And this is a rotational basis. Normally, you get rotated through this position, so you can all experience some sense of leadership and coordination with the inspecting uh, member, so that you get an understanding of one day you could be taking on these kind of roles, and it gives you that ability of uh, management and coordination between the platoon and just a little bit out of your comfort zone. A lot of people get nervous about being a core senior or a section senior or whatever. Uh, don't worry about it. It's good for you. It's good learning experience. One day you will be a leader in the Canadian Armed Forces or in the military, whatever you're doing. So adjust to it and, and embrace it. There's no point fighting the core senior role. Okay, learn from it. Uh, it can be challenging. You're put under even more pressure than the everyday normal recruits because you have a lot more responsibility on your hands. But it is what it is. So let's see how the rest of this inspection goes. Why do you still have your plate in there? Private Dumont 725, Cook 064, awaiting your inspection, Master Corporal. About turn. Oh, 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 oh. did I tell you to about turn again? No, Master Corporal. About turn. So this is the recruit that I'm going to focus on in these particular inspections from this basic up series because it's a very good example of how I really hope that you as a recruit will learn from this kind of example and, and apply it to your own inspections because unfortunately this recruit has uh, had a either a really bad week or is having a really bad day and I want to highlight some things that you should not be doing during an inspection that's going to make your life a lot easier. 
Here's the first thing, okay? Listen to the things you're being told, okay? Don't just voice it out and lock yourself out of a conversation because you're nervous or scared. Listen to what's being told for you. Even if you're getting told off or something's been told to you that's wrong, take it on board. And as you can see, the first thing she got wrong was just not listening to the command of the Master Corporal, which was one about turn, which is a 180 degree drill movement. She decided to do another one straight after. So she's not thinking clearly from the start, and that's already a not a great start to this inspection. You'll also notice with this recruit that her mindset is somewhat in her facial expression does not seem prepared or involved in this inspection. She's rolling her eyes, doing facial expressions. You'll understand a little bit more as we go through this inspection what I mean by that. But your mindset needs to be prepared for this. Okay, If you're going into it like, oh, I have no interest, I don't care, whatever, or the blah mentality, you're really not going to succeed very well here. Um, do not go into an inspection thinking that you can have an attitude or um, any kind of preconceived notions of how the inspection is going to go. You're there to be inspected. You're not there to give feedback. You're not there to answer back. You're certainly not there to tell the staff what's right and wrong or what's where and what's right. It's just not a good start. So this recruit, you know, if make a mistake in the about turn, that's fine. Suck it up and absorb it. But you can see some of the facial expression she's making is producing some concern for me anyway, when you think how the rest of this inspection is going to go. Hey, about turn. Yes. Got him out loud, Calhoun. Four. Down five. Further. Down further. Make sure that's four. Nope, make sure that's full. So in this situation, uh, she's recovered quite well. She's doing the drill movements, she's looking straight ahead, she's not looking around, and she's paying attention to what the massacre was telling her. I'm not too sure exactly what was said between him and her regarding that water bottle, but of course water bottles should be filled as if you're going into battle. And uh, he shook it and showed her it wasn't, uh, wasn't filled, and I couldn't quite tell what she said, but again, he said, no, it should be filled. So that makes me think that she said maybe something that could potentially be an excuse or a reason which they don't really want to listen to. They just want to know that you're going to correct it, which an answer to that is, yes, Master Corporal. In other words, I will not make that happen next time. They don't want to listen to reasons. They don't want to listen to excuses. You may think that justifying it is going to help the situation, and unfortunately it could just make it worse, which we're going to see very heavily coming up. What did, I say? what did I say about your anger yesterday? Getting into details. The test is Friday. For sure, Master Corporal. Okay, so this brings me on to my next point. Do not look around. You are there at the position of what's called attention, which you will be taught out in your drill. But when you're in the position of attention, unless specified to look at something specifically, Face forward, don't look around, don't fidget. And this recruit, again, is looking around, uh, kind of moving ahead around. It's not a good way to go uh, because you should be at a standardized position like all the other recruits will be facing forward until specifically answered a question or whatever else is being told of you to look somewhere. So just face forward, guys. Save yourself some hassle because they're probably going to say face your front. Okay, so this recruit really just needs to look forward, wait until she gets a question given to her. That towel is supposed to be 9 by 12. That's actually not a bad towel. I need to buy another one at the HQ. Okay, so this is where things start to go pretty downhill. As I said before, no excuses, no reasons, unless specifically asked why the staff don't want to listen to your reasoning. If you know the reason, that's fine. Then fix it. As you can tell by the recruit, she said, that's not the right equipment. I'm waiting for something to open or to go to get a new one. That's fine. Keep it to yourself. You know your corrective action already. You're probably going to get told off for it, but that is, that's okay, right? You know the mistake's there. You'll fix it. But passing on a reason to that, it's almost like you're trying to justify that it was wrong. And that's not what they want to listen to. They just want you to accept the fact that there is an error and to absorb it and move on. It's not a good start. So please, troops and people that are willing to apply for the Canadian Armed Forces, try keep this to an absolute minimum, if at all, any responses during the answer and questions of the inspection, because it's just not necessary. They sell towels at HQ? HQ, clothing, clothing store, store maybe. Clothing yeah. store, yeah. <clears throat> and the, uh, oh, it's a good thing I dropped it, eh? Yeah, pins <laughs> in the back, eh? Make sure you put them on. I'm gonna have to talk to the. 
So this was a bit of the straw on the camel's back for this Master Corporal. You know, uh, the turning around incorrectly, the looking around, uh, potentially the answer with the water bottle. And I think the real difficulty for this inspection staff, maybe because they're being filmed, is that normally in these kind of situations, um, it's difficult to have that conversation with a recruit about performance because it shouldn't be something that's aired on public TV. But in this instance, uh, you know, the master corporal did the right decision and said, you know, I'm gonna, I need to speak to you later. Something's not quite right. We'll have a talk later. Um, and it's going to get a little bit escalated from the PO or the petty officer that's going to have an inspection chat with her next. But you don't laugh during inspection. You don't bob your head around. You don't look around. You should still be facing forward. And pretty much the only thing should be spoken from you as a recruit is yes master corporal no master corporal uh, laughing and giggling because something was dropped by the staff yeah it's just not going to set you up for a good day or a good inspection so please troops just don't do it we will we will talk today so again the back answering it does not need to happen we will have a talk today it's not we will oh will we will we have a talk today Yes, <laughs> that's what he said. You don't need to reiterate that that was something that was stated to you. Um, it's just not necessary. It's not required. And it, it may, as, as good natured as it may come across inside with you or with this recruit, I'm sure she meant no disrespect by it. In a military mindset or military fashion, it is disrespectful. You take commands, you take orders, and you move on, and you absorb them, and you, you action them. But you do not create that kind of context of conversation. It's just not necessary. We're going to talk right freaking out, Dumont. This is Monday of week freaking six. You're still curling your hands up when you lift your leg. You're still looking around all over the place and staring straight to your front. You're still making googly eyes. You're still making funny faces. You're still chewing on your tongue. Don't you freaking move your head! Do you understand me, Private Dumont? If this is too freaking difficult for you, we'll arrange for you to go somewhere else. Do you understand me? Would you like to go back to week one and start over again? Because I can freaking arrange it with a platoon starting today! Of course not, Master Corporal. I am not a freaking Master Corporal! Yo. Do your push-ups. So, unfortunately, it escalated to a point where the senior inspecting member uh, was very upset in the behavior and the kind of conversation that was being had between the uh, primary inspecting uh, uh, Master Corporal there. And the PO, or the petty officer, was uh, not happy with this recruit at all, as you can see. You know, And unfortunately, the reality is that it's not all you know fuzzy bears and fluffy butterflies. Uh, the reality is that you are part of a professional organization that is installing the highest levels of discipline. And sometimes there is a bit of a wake-up call where you hit these roadblocks and you make these mistakes. We all make mistakes. And we all have times where we're having a bad day. And I can tell you for sure this recruit is probably just having a really bad day. Um, we're emotional. It's a lot of pressure, as I said at the front of this video, but we have to control that. We have to stay in that mindset of, okay, you know, I've made mistakes. Let's move on. Um, unfortunately, in this particular example, you know, uh, it progressively gets a little worse. And this is what I'm saying about going down a rabbit hole. In this instance, um, the recruit should have just accepted the fact that, you know, yeah, maybe that didn't go over so well. My staff's telling me the things I'm not quite doing right, looking around, you know, rolling my eyes, uh, you know, chew my lip or whatever else that's sort of maybe perceived as an attitude problem, maybe, uh, may not be. Um, but perception is everything, right? Someone may think you're doing something that you may not be doing, but in the military, there is no exception to that. There's no gray area. It's face your front, no moving around, no looking around, no facial expressions, do as you're told. Uh, and of course, you know, some of these have been noted to not being done by these staff. So now, unfortunately, she's paying the price by doing push-ups. Let's keep going. Keep the noise down over there. There's other people getting inspected. So you want to save Private too much? No, Pio. You don't wave your freaking hands around when you're talking to a staff member. Do you understand me? Okay, your feet are together and stop. Just before you get yourself so freaking dig in, dug in, that you're going to regret it. Don't back talk me. Okay, I don't put up with it for my three year old. I'm not going to put up with it from you. Do you understand me? I didn't think anything wrong. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. You were. And exactly what I told you. Do you understand me? Well, I still feel like I was trying my hardest, and then I got yelled at. Well, Dr. Dumont, in week six, trying your hardest isn't good enough. Well, I'll do better. Then do better. Pack your stuff up. I just wanted to say, like, what are we going to be talking about? We've already talked. 
You don't need to talk later. I told you exactly what you need to correct, what you need to work on, work on it. You understand me? Yes, P.O. So before I go any further in this video, I want to make it extremely clear, the utmost clear that you can ever imagine. This is nothing to do with a male or female context in this situation. I can tell you firsthand the number of soldiers I've seen go into meltdowns that are male or female in both my British military career and Canadian military career. We all go through extreme emotion, stress and challenges, whether it be through basic training or other parts of our career. I've seen soldiers have been in the military 16 years and having full temper tantrums, meltdowns. It happens to everyone, male, female, whoever you may be. Okay, it happens to everyone. So I want to make that very clear before I go any further forward, um, because it's important. In this situation, you can see that this soldier is very, very emotional. And you would be, of course. You've just been called out on something. You've just had a pretty much been shouted out and in the military that happens, okay? Not as much nowadays, uh, but it does happen. And it's sometimes a bit of pill to swallow to have someone shout at you, especially you're not used to it. Some of these troops have, you know, literally just had six, worth, uh, six weeks worth of training. That's not long to be away from a civilian world. And sometimes when you are called out for something that you, in your right mind, think, you know, I'm doing everything in my power to do the best I can. You can hear what she was saying. She says she's trying her best. But as the staff said, unfortunately, that best may not be quite up to the standard that we're looking for. And it's, it's hard, it's really hard to have someone tell you that, to say that unfortunately you're still not quite meeting that standard. But this is where a video like this can encourage and help you to stay away from this kind of um, interaction or, or uh, behavior, I say. And again, sometimes these things aren't something that people inherently just do all the time. This recruit may be under extreme stress. And when we are under extreme stress, we do things irrationally, you know. Uh, throwing the boot on top of the rifle, making noise on purpose because they're they're upset or angry, and you can tell she's she's angry. She seems frustrated, and you know, in some regard, you could say rightly so, right? Out of the comfort zone, out of the normality, she's going to be angry. But again, guys and gals, please don't vent your frustrations during the inspection that is still ongoing. You can vent. You have every right to vent and be frustrated and angry. Figure it out later on. Do it on some PT. Go on a you know, go to the gym, go on the boxing gloves for 20 minutes, right? In the evening when training's done or whatever else, figure a way to control that emotion because if it starts coming out in the middle of an inspection when you're doing your day-to-day -day work, it's going to set you up with an image you don't want, okay? A recruit that can't control their emotions or is having a, a tough time. Now, staff are really good at being able to address this, you know. We're trained to help you. We're not here to... to you know, bring you into a place where you're going to be finding things even more difficult because you've hit that wall or you've hit that emotional level where you need to vent. We're not going to, you know, as, as leaders in the CAF, uh, make it harder for you. We're going to help you and support you, but you have to work with them. And, you know, having a temper tantrum through the middle of inspection is not going to do that. If you're having these severe frustrations or concerns, speak to your staff, right, in a private setting. Master Corporal, PO, I'm sorry about earlier, I really am frustrated. Can you please guide me in what I'm doing wrong? And, and can we have a conversation that's just low key? And they're, they're fine with that. That's what they're there for, that's their job to be. The army has changed, the military has changed. I'm gonna be very clear and honest with you, there's elephant in the room. Times have changed. We are not this uh, pit bull force that, uh, that you may perceive, even in this video, as I said, times have changed. Instructors, staff, and trainers are there to make you succeed. They don't want you to fail and get you out. They want you to pass out and become a part of the Canadian Armed Forces. So it's time to just consider this example and think about how you could consider your own reactions to it. Hey, Bo. So that's it for today, folks. I really just wanted to try and bring up an example of things that can go wrong and how emotions can play upon you very easily in an inspection. You know, it's it's hard to go down um, into an uh, inspection setting from civilian life into a military world and just think that everything is going to be peachy. It's not. You're going to get picked up for things no matter what. It's okay that that happens. You want to just be able to correct those mistakes and move on. Don't take things to heart. Don't wear your heart on a sleeve. Accept the fact they're going to find something. We're trained to find just about anything wrong with your kid. If you expect that you're going to go into your inspections for basic training and find that nothing is found, well, as me as an instructor in the future would say, that's not the way we should be instructing. We should be finding things because it allows you to, for when you're a future leader, do the same thing. Um, the littlest of details that you may not think are important could be. 
you know, a tiny little speck of rust on a rifle indicates that you're not fully visualizing what is wrong with your rifle and you're not checking every little thing. And something like a weapon system or a rifle, or as you can see in this example, boots, if you have stuff and dirt and boot powder still in there, what does that say about you looking after your feet? or the ability to fight the enemy if it came to it. So these are why these inspections are really important. As you can see, it's not difficult to get through, right? It's it's a few push-ups, it's uh, you know, maybe a couple of harsh words or communications, but other than that, it's it's not a big deal, okay? And you'll be able to adapt to it and move on and pass your basic training and be able to succeed in your career and whatever you're going on to. So I hope this video just gives you a little bit of an understanding of what to expect for an inspection, things that will happen. Uh, and to just really please not take things to heart. Try your best to control your emotions. Um, work with your staff. They're there to help you. It may not seem like they are, but they are there to support you and make you succeed. So speak to them, talk to them, vent to them if you need to in a more private uh, and respectable fashion. I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. If you did, please leave me a comment and a like. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, click the little bell button by the subscribe button. Uh, if you do also want to support any other form uh, or portion of my channel, you can check out the description box below for all the other links. Thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.